And that one-on-one, -on -one, so that, that particular farm was five generations. It's crazy. So meeting, yeah. meeting them and understanding that the kilning process is so tuned that they barely sleep more than 15 minutes at a time for the weeks that this yeah. happens. So mm. to make sure that nothing's over kilned or under kilned, that like they might have someone to help them, but that in itself is teaching someone that art. Mm -hmm. And, and it we're is. talking five generations of this, it's next level. So, uh, go back to the name of the beer now, the Hot Bro Super Choice. Uh, so, Maddie, tell us a little uh, bit about how this came about. Yeah? After we went on the trip, we started a bit of a messenger group with yeah. the crew that went on it. Um, so we've been talking back and forward about the sort of concept of the beer amongst many other, many other topics, yep. as uh, brewers and hot people sort of talk about. Um, and then we were trying to come up with a name um, well, we wanted to have a bit of fun with it. We didn't want it to be sort of completely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, so there's probably 15, 20 different names going back and forward. Um, and then after we brewed the beer, I think I just made a comment um, after throwing the hops in the whirlpool that the hops are smelling super choice. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> anyone that knows the Kiwi know they use choice probably yeah, too much. <laughs> so, and then I think Sandy said, perfect. That's what we're going to call it, yeah. the super <laughs> choice IPA. So. Oh, um, I don't know if that's actually a beer style in the uh, BJCP yet, but I reckon next year for um, do any I mean, beer I, judging, I think I think, yeah. I think Super Choice might become a category. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, I think we may have started something. So like mm. Hazy or West Coast IPA, we now have Super Choice IPA as a beer category. I reckon that'll take on. Yep. And then Hop Bro was a bit of a play on Hop Co. Mm -hmm. and Hey Brew as Kiwis. So mm -hmm. yep. yeah, all a bit of um, play on words and a bit of fun. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, the beers come out fantastic. The name and everything kind of represents that and the trip and the great times that you guys had um, also. Um, I know, Smokey, you haven't been outside of, or well, you haven't been to New Zealand. So did you want to tell us a little bit about like what you got out of the Generally, trip? Generally, they don't let him out of the country. Yeah, so. I'm trying not to get off my farm. Yeah. Like, it's a rule of thumb. <laughs> it's a beautiful place to have a brewery. Like up in the hills, it's like very, very nice. It's like you just stick to your own. Has anyone got a banjo? Yeah, ding, 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 ding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, the truth is, is that it was absolutely stunning. I was like really stoked to, to have the opportunity to go. And um, like I lent on Maddie for that a little bit. Um, and thank you for having us. But uh, yeah, it was a complete, to use the pun, froth mission for me. Froth like at the end of the day, like, you know, um, flying, flying in there, I, I'm, a, I'm a lover of anything ge geological and, and geographical and, yeah. and it's an amazing country just from the outset. The South Island was next level. And then um, going, going to visit Doug and Gabby, their farm and their story is next level. Mm -hmm. So um, I was really impressed with what they're doing there and I can't wait to use some of their products. It's going to happen. Um, and definitely super inspired by New Zealand and the products, not just the country, but also um, what they're producing. So I can't wait to use, to use more of what, what's available there. And um, in terms of independence, you can't go past Gladfields and, and Hopco. So 100%. Um, yeah, I'm really represented looking, in I'm all really forms, right? I'm looking forward to, to making some beer with them and that will happen down the track. We're a little bit limited in what we can do at the moment due to, yeah. due to volume and tank space, but the reality is, is that, yeah, we're, it's going to happen and it's going to happen soon. So it's good. But uh, in the meantime, uh, after that, the hop harvest was next level. So for me, it was like a kid in a candy shop. I don't think I've ever been as excited about anything. There's, there's equal measure. Some of my background people wouldn't know, but is in organic farming and managing organic farms. So I was equally inspired by the agriculture and the process of like um, harvest and uh, it was wonderful to be there. Motueka and, uh, and Nelson were beautiful places. And yeah, to be there among mates, um, tasting fresh beers, tasting local beers, and just having a good time, getting amongst it and being educated. I think as a brewer, actually going level. to a hop farm when they're picking, harvesting the hops is like, it's like a lifetime sort of a oh, bucket list dream. It, so it's, it's absolutely insane. I've been, I've been brewing for probably 12, 15 years. Yeah. Um, I'm still only 25, so I must have started pretty young. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you. Um, you push it was only a couple of years I'm ago. I'm 26, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're like good. So, <laughs> looks like first, it. Um, I had air before I met Matty. <laughs> with Sandy and went to uh, where the Amarillo's from. Amarillo yeah. hops. Yeah. And just the first time I went to a hop farm, it was just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. This is how it's all done. That's the aroma in the air. There. there is, it's just something <laughs> yeah, so, very exciting. So, so like when we went to Mac hops, like we, we rocked up there on the bus and 
there was a, a truck with a trailer on the back with all of these like harvested vines, but with, with hops waiting to be driven in and hung up to be harvested. And yeah. these things were hanging off. I, I couldn't even believe seeing them in the flesh. They were like big fat Cubans. And they were yeah. massive. Huge, they huge. were, what do we call them? There was something fingers anyway. Either yeah. way, it's probably not a good, good term uh, for, for this. But either way, and, and, oh, being there, the old machine was, at, I think it was the old Guinness um, hop harvester or something like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. It oh, was the, the old Bruff machine. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was. And Matt and I were able, like, they let us go up two at a time up to the top. So Matt and I whipped up there, and like, yeah, there was severe celebration on my behalf. Like, I don't think I've ever been so excited. <laughs> well, maybe I have a couple times. My child's birth. The, <laughs> but after that, I was like, I was like, yes, this is so good, and it was pure joy. So yeah, like, uh, super grateful for having that opportunity. Thank you kindly. It's fantastic. And you talk about going all of the hop fields and everything like that, and. We were lucky enough to go down to some hop fields in Tasmania and things like that, um, and that literally just blew my mind. And I'm not, I'm not even a brewer, and the the, the knowledge and, and that experience was out of this world, out of this world. So to be on the other side of things and actually using the products that you're seeing coming out of it and getting a result from it is just sensational. And that one-on-one, -on -one, so that, that particular farm was five generations. It's crazy, so meeting, yeah. So meeting them and understanding that the kilning process is so tuned they, they barely sleep more than 15 minutes at a time for the weeks that this happens. So mm. to make sure that nothing's over kilned or under kilned, that like they might have someone to help them, but that in itself is teaching someone that art. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and it we're is. We're talking five generations of this. It's next level. It is yeah. art. It is yeah. definitely art. It's mm. very, really very labor intensive. I've seen anyone as enthusiastic about the trip as Smokey was. Oh, yeah. 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 He had it's so like a kid in a candy yeah. shop, right? He really was a kid in a candy shop. He was... Um, it was next level, it was great. <laughs> and we, we must note that Smokey did come over wearing a dryzer bone. Yeah, I did. So yeah. being, a, being yeah. a Queensland, I'm not sure why he actually has one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, it rains <laughs> a lot in Crumlin Valley. Yeah. It rains it a lot. They come in handy when we're riding The uh, man from lime, Smoky River. Lime scooters. So <laughs> it was turns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Matty, what did you get out of the trip? I know you've been kind of around the world traveling and this, that and everything else, and we've been kind of in and out of uh, different places and hop fields and, and maltings and things. So as, a, as a, an adventure over to, the, to NZ, what did you get out of the trip? Well, I'd actually never been to New Zealand. Okay. So that's to start fantastic. with, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, as we mentioned, we got to go to the maltings, mm -hmm. which was awesome. And then going to Nelson, which is sort of the area where all the hops are, was just such a beautiful place. And then every time you go to a new farm or talk to a hop grower or even another brewer or anyone, every time you just learn so much. Yep. For me, what I get out of it is uh, just all the learning mm -hmm. and the education, um, apart from having the occasional beer while you're there. Oh, it's, it's a bit of fun rude, as well. Be rude not to, but. Yeah, it's just fascinating to learn off these people. Like Smokey was just saying, they've been doing it for five generations and they know when the hops are dry just by feeling them. Mm. So that's an art that... Um, yeah, it's blood, sort of, sweat and tears, isn't it? Yeah, yeah like you can do it, do it with it. Uh, different yes, instruments so you can just sort of know when it's ready. Mm. So it was just fascinating to see like what they do. And I've now I think I've been to three or four different countries while I've harvested and they're all different. Yeah. And they do it differently for different reasons based on the machinery they have, based on the tradition of growing hops, all these different things to sort of get an end product. So it's just, it's quite fascinating to go to a new place every time. And, mm. Yeah, and then to think we were there when they were harvesting the hops that are actually in this beer. I know. It's pretty cool. It's really cool. Yeah, so it's sort of, yeah, picking those hops, we helped select them and now I've been able to make a beer with those exact hops yeah. and then have everyone here to actually do it is pretty special, I think. Yeah, and that was my first time ever doing anything yeah. like that. So the learning curve there was intense, big time. So like, yeah, the level of stoke was massive. I guess for a lot of brewers, <laughs> they probably just take it for granted. You just order whatever it is, Mottawaka hops or Nelson Sorvin and just go, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. To actually see how it's picked, how it's harvested, yeah how each field might taste slightly different or smell different. Yep. But there's so much that actually goes into growing them, picking them, 100%. and then getting them into your beer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's... Plus it's like eight years of breeding, generally, oh, yeah. to get it to the point where they, yeah. they pass the trial period. Yeah. Yeah. So like, up to 12 to 4. Yeah. So the, it's, it's like aging a whiskey variety. or something, yeah. right? The so new like, Hort variety, yeah. they first started growing in 2003, yeah. mm. and it's only just this year become commercially available. Yep. So that's 17, 18 years of... A lot of love. Yeah, before they actually are happy with it to release it. So it's, yeah, 
a lot of work. And well, Sandy, thank you very much for taking these guys over there uh, and giving them the experiences uh, of a lifetime. Sandy, yeah. <laughs> uh, smoking. It was great fun. We, we had this year's crew was awesome. Yeah. I, I, we, look, we've had a lot of fun every year we go, but uh, yeah, this this year's crew. The, the fact that we we were sort of just pre-COVID and everyone's sort of watching the news every yeah. day about what's going on with this thing, and then we we were all going to go over to uh, to a conference in Perth straight after New Zealand, but then. That got cancelled and all of a sudden lockdown happened. It was sort of a scary time. So we got to have a blast right before lockdown. Yeah. So it was something to sort of go into lockdown with and, you know, have these treasured memories. Exactly. It's a yeah. celebration, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and then to get straight out of lockdown two days ago in Tasmania to be able to travel again <laughs> and come up a canning day for, exactly. for our beer yeah. was, uh, was really good. Oh, that's yeah. really good. That's really good. And I love the fact that... We've got, even though the Black Ops boys aren't here, like you look at the type of uh, areas of, and scalability of, of each independent brewery. And so we've got these boys here that are out of Kurum Valley in, in the shed and, and the passion of doing all that type of stuff. We're, we've got the Rebel guys that have started a couple of years ago and now we're onto our, our next phase of our expansion and growing there like that. And then you've got the guys from Black Ops that are absolutely killing it and are growing exponential. And, and the fact that you get all these guys together in different stages um, of, of, the, of the business side of things and brewing and everything like that, and all the, all the minds get together and around one topic, and it's just really good. They can share their secrets and build each other on, on the back of that type of stuff. And yeah. that's what I really love about, one, the collaboration of the industry, is that it's always a fairly open book. Yeah. Um, and also even the hop suppliers and malts and things like that is given the opportunities to the little guys to understand the full processes and, and bring them along and give them that learning experience as well. So that's, uh, that's really good. And, and thank you very much for, for that opportunity. So we really appreciate that. And I would just put in a little plug that there's a chance we might be getting a tap room soon. Oh, 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 oh look what's, uh, oh, that's, Watch the next, that's, the, that's the next topic, 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. The <laughs> Valley Tap Room is going to be never crowded never. every day. Well, let's hope. Cheers to obscure vessels. <laughs> yeah, no, no glassware involved. It'll be <laughs> toot, toot, toot. <laughs> so talking about the trip with these gentlemen, Heidi, you were on the trip as well, weren't you? Yep. So, any insights into uh, this ge these gentlemen, or were they very well behaved, or how did it go down? Oh, no, like everyone was, everyone was fine, everyone was lovely, we all had separate toilets, I think that like made it all Probably right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, everyone was legendary, it was, yeah, awesome. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Your second trip to New Zealand yeah. too? Yeah. So you, you're old school now. Yeah. You know the rounds. Veteran. You know the rounds. So did you basically lead these guys on the tour whilst everyone else uh, quality assured all the beers? Yeah, definitely did a fair bit of driving and looking yeah. in the rear view mirror, everyone's mm -hmm. like flaked out. <laughs> Sleeping. Thanks like for the support, guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very like... Um... Was there an instance where Maddie was cuddled, cuddled up to someone? Many. It's yeah. all about knowing the right time to recharge the batteries. <laughs> Yeah. And while New Zealand has lots of nice sights, it's also nice to have a rest on the bus. Definitely, oh, definitely. You want to be uh, alert and awake for the, uh, the full experience when yeah. you get out of the, the, the bus. Exactly. And that's what we're here for. We supply the hops and drive the bus so you can sleep and yeah. brew. Yeah. And... I did have a lot of rest while I was there. It was good. Yeah. Well, you're a pleasure to deal with, Heidi. Thank oh, you. Oh, <laughs> Thank you for looking after them and uh, getting them back in one piece, I reckon. Oh, <laughs> Matty was pretty rough when he came back. I didn't think he was going to survive. I've seen, him, I've seen him in pretty bad conditions, but when he... Hey, when this I saw is all on first, camera. Let's not tell too many times. <laughs> when I saw him... <laughs>